But today, most countries provide for some form of community-based forestry, although the approaches vary. And um, so they could range from some sort of collaborative forestry in state forests to more autonomous community and smallholder forest tenure arrangements. So when we look at the trends, uh, there has been significant shift in uh, rights recognized. So the earlier approaches to community forestry provided minimal rights and mainly response, shifted to certain responsibilities to communities and mainly in terms of monitoring and patrolling forests. When community forests were recognized, they were, uh, communities were often given access to largely degraded uh, forests for subsistence use uh, of non-wood forest products. Today, increasingly number of countries are recognizing rights to good quality of forests and to commercial use of wood and non-wood forest products. So FAO supported community-based forestry and tenure assessments in 23 countries in the last six years. Uh, of these 20 countries uh, had provided communities the rights to harvest uh, trees for timber for commercial purposes. So this is significant as sustainable harvest of uh, high value forest products can bring substantial benefits uh, to communities and further incentivize them to, um, to engage in forest management activities at the local level. So the more recent studies on community forestry, including uh, several meta studies, show very positive outcomes uh, on forests. For example, the FAO assessments conducted with government and non-government entities, um, stakeholders, show um, in all countries a reduction in illegal logging, um, unsustainable fuel wood ex extraction uh, and charcoal production reduce wildlife poaching, uh, fewer encroachments uh, in agricultural use, uh, for agricultural use, and uh, reduction in land grabbing incidences and incidences of fires. Um, however, despite the legal provisions, uh, community forests continue to provide limited income benefits to communities. And uh, I, I think this is worth a closer look why that might be the case. I think this is mainly because many countries around the world have not actually implemented community forestry um, uh, in practice. So they've adopted laws, but not implemented them. And then many of the countries have not actually formalized these rights and or protected these rights always. Also, no support is being provided to communities as in the agricultural sector. No? In the agricultural sector, we see farmers being supported for um, from anywhere from registration of rights to in providing inputs to uh, production markets, loans, insurance, all of those, but not necessarily, um, that's not the, rarely the case in forestry. Instead, communities often face numerous uh, regulatory uh, obstacles uh, in the rights formalization processes, in the development forest, uh, forest management plans, inventories, annual operation plans, harvesting and transport permits. Uh, you know, they also face many problems and uh, with high and multiple taxation on forest products, uh, inaccessibility to markets, um, just onerous monitoring and reporting requirements and so forth. So this means that there's a huge opportunity loss for implementing community forestry around the world. Uh, meanwhile, um, a handful of countries that have supported community forestry initiatives through national programs uh, show remarkable success in improving forests and responding to climate change, improving livelihoods, uh, helping meet uh, domestic demand of wood and non-wood forest products, um, such as China, Mexico, and at more local levels, uh, Uganda, Nepal, Guatemala, and so forth. So all of these experiences are highly relevant for the Mekong countries where community forestry implementation remains still um, weak uh, in comparison. As the countries think about responding to climate change uh, in Mekong countries, to halting deforestation and engaging in landscape restoration, they can learn from the experiences and also uh, tap into the huge potential for community forestry um, in that region, not just to meet the forest related challenges, but also to contribute to sustainable development, development goals at the same time. So, so our work at FAO, we are working with regional bodies as well as countries to um, 
well, our starting point often is to conduct uh, assessments of community-based forestry and associated tenure regimes mm -hmm. to understand where are the gaps and the strengths and limitations of existing uh, um, community-based forestry arrangements uh, at the country level. And then based on the gaps identified, we support countries with policy and legal reforms or provide institutional capacity to strengthen um, the tenure rights of communities and smallholders and to implement CBF in countries. We also support community forestry groups and strengthen them to improve forest um, governance and uh, improve livelihoods with special emphasis on the poor and the vulnerable populations and women and youth who have gotten, often gotten left out uh, of past community forestry initiatives. So yeah, so we also promote, um, uh, do research and uh, promote dialogue between government and non-government stakeholders to enhance understanding of community-based forestry, the global experience and better practice um, cases. And, uh, and some work we are now doing on promoting responsible investments that recognize tenure rights of communities and smallholders. So I will end at that and hopefully if there's any questions, you're welcome to ask. Thank you.